Okay, so the two art pieces, or I chose architecture and an art piece, it'd be Machu Picchu and the Great Wave. So we'll start with Machu Picchu. Uh, Machu Picchu was built during the 1450s, but it was discovered in 1911. It served as a capital for the Incan civilization. It was said to be populated by at least a thousand people, but most, most likely um, they were of a higher class. Um, Machu Picchu literally means in Quechuan old peak or old mountain. The Incan people believed that gods, spirits, long dead ancestors manifested themselves on earth in forms of these natural in forms in of these naturals, sorry. Manifested themselves in these forms, such as like natural formations, such as like lakes, mountains, I think even rivers. Um, so a lot of their most sacred constructions were made close to or even next to these natural formations. In this case, Machu Picchu was the selected sites for the city, one of the capital. Moving along, the Great Wave. Um, hopefully get the name right. It was made by Katsushika Okusai. Um, it's a woodblock print created around the 18, created in 1831. It was actually a part of a, of a series of woodblock prints called 36 Views of Mount Fuji. As we see, the piece is about a wave, right there, um, crashing down on fishermen. The boat's right there. But what honestly really does catch our attention is the inclusion of Mount Fuji, a sacred mountain in Japan. What's most fascinating is that the fact that Mount Fuji was included, some say that it was to pay respect to the mountain, some even say it was actually to make fun of it. Uh, regardless, what we see is that nature in two forms, the wave one, one form, the wave being very um, dangerous and control, the second, the mountain very being, being very still and peaceful. Uh, cool observation made. Um, was, you know, the fishermen are nothing compared to the wave, and the wave is nothing compared to the mountain. So, comparing both, um, let's see. So, something I believe, you know, that histories and traps in arts, music, architecture, these two cultures presents a mountain as being sacred. And we can honestly assume that both cultures, you know, their way of thinking or even their way of life was that nature presents a greater power or that nature should be essentially respected because both obviously did respect um, nature. In the end, you know, two, completely cult two completely different cultures have you know, a common way of thinking um, they can even teach us that, you know, honestly, we should respect nature even today. And yeah, that's, that's the end.